The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman. This is the Tiger Technicians Hour, 877-927-6648. And I was just in the den, uh, uh, mentioned, isn't, isn't this time for a relief rally, uh, no matter what the Fed says? Uh, no big news until the end of the year. And I said, well, some of these NASDAQ stocks are just getting hammered. So I think this is very selective. Look at this, Rob Roblox. Uh, gaming platform, game creation system. I mean, when you hear the CEO interviewed, uh, uh, Roblox is, uh, is it everything? It is important to um, the, the technical veracity of many other systems as well, not just gaming. Uh, and yet, here it is, 141.60 was the all-time high. It was an IPO down in the 60 area. Uh, uh, what is it, about less than a year ago? I think it was February or so. What was that? Uh, March. And now we're looking at, and then it runs to 141.60, and now it's at 96, 50 points uh, low. I mean, that is a that is a big hit. It's, uh, what, 33%. So, yeah. All right. So let's just get to the, the nitty-gritty. We can't do anything until the Fed, until the market reacts to what the Fed says. I don't care what the Fed says. The Fed could say, the sky is green. They could say, uh, interest rates are there. They could do anything they want. I don't care. I do care very much what the market does. And if the market is sharply higher at three o'clock, it says, "Yep, I'm going to ignore the. We know what the Fed's doing. We know what they. We, we know what they're watching. We can handle it." And if it's the the um, market is sharply lower, it says, uh oh, be careful. And these patterns, the dreaded H pattern, what is the dreaded H pattern? Becomes rife. You start to see it everywhere. And I'm looking at. Did it just disappear? No way. Oh, it's just gone off my list. I don't believe that. No, no, no. It can't. It can't. Oh, did I use too many and now I've run out? Oh, there it is. Good. Okay, here it is. The dreaded H pattern comes down sharply, arches over at a peak A or B. It fails and it comes down and it takes out that left side low red because it can keep going down really sharply. The the green on the left on the right side is very positive. You can see it on the way up. You make the reverse Y, keep going higher. In this particular instance, we've got the Dow. Yes, it's arching over. It isn't arched over very much. The day is young. We'll see what happens. I'll keep this pattern up. Now, let me put it over here. And let me show you as we go through these. Look at this. The S&P arching over a lot more seriously. Look at this. That arch formation that we're looking at right now can turn into, it could, it could find support. And then all of a sudden start another H pattern if there's a successful rally later today. Or if all of a sudden you're looking at this under 4,600 instead of 4,622 down 11, uh, you're looking at the uh, arch formation that says dreaded H, be careful, it can go a lot lower. And that's that pattern that we're looking at right here. Ping, there it is, the H pattern. What about the QQQ? The QQQ, try to rally and it's kind of failing. It's down a dollar seventy, dollar eighty right now, three eighty six point forty one. It's also got the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone working its its magic, pushing the price away from where it was. And now what we're looking at is you got the H pattern right here. What is the H pattern? It looks like this: red straight down, and then it arches over at a peak A or a B, and it comes down, takes out the left side low. What do we do right here? Peak A it failed um, the first time. After the peak, the all-time high at 48.71, the 22nd of November in the in the QQQ, and it plunges under the 50-period moving average, rallies up and goes to, the, to to what became a resistance level, and that resistance level has pushed the price down and is now struggling. What is the um, uh, what is the IWM doing? The Russell 2000 small caps fail 
failed underneath the previous uh, low, failed at the 200 period moving average, made an inverted V or a dreaded H pattern right here, taking out the left side low. My rule of thumb is 212.71 was the left side low around right about December the uh, 1st or 3rd. Um, and then it rallies all the way to 226s. And now it's trading at 212.07. It's down below. It has two days in which to close above 212.71 to save the day. We'll see what happens now. And now we're also looking at, so that's the IY. Look at the XLK. XLK managed to make a higher high, even though all the others are starting to fail and couldn't get to new highs. The XLK, the S&P Select Tech Spider Fund, ran up to 170, I forgot to put that in, 175.80, was it? 175.58 on the 13th. There we go. One. 75.5. Remember, every single piece of notation that you see on every one of my charts, whether it's a one-minute chart, one-minute chart, one-minute chart making a peak E top at 9:28. Was that was that at 9:30? At 9:32, at 46.41.25, peak E in the one-minute chart plunges down, slumps to the 4:15 area, tries to rally, and now it's at 4:19. So uh, the, every notation that you see is me typing it in. I know it looks cumbersome, but look, you, look how quickly it, 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 it doesn't take me long. Now, the big question is, are we looking at leg F in the weekly chart, or is this F slash B? If it's a B, it means that it should hold any pullback towards its 169.26, having made it 175.58 all-time high, a daily peak G slash C, I'll turn the count. It looks more like a G right now. You see, everything that I'm looking at suggests that the market should fail here on whatever the Fed says. But there's just enough, so many stocks have been battered that they are so oversold that any, just a hint of delay in the speed with which uh, the Fed is going to do anything about uh, raising rates, um, that can help decisively. And therefore, you could get you could get this year-end holding pattern, even if it isn't just the Santa Claus rally, but it's some kind of a holding pattern. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying, well, uh, we've got alternate counts. The MACD is good. Stochastic starting to pull back under 80 percent. It's at 79.24 right now in the weekly chart of the XLK. It's way, it's still above the nine period moving average and the nine is above the 14 period moving average. That's usually look how positive it is. In fact, let me just do this here. Uh, I want this is in technical Friday, but I'm going to make it into technical Friday. Look at this. You've got. Uh, can I? No, I'm going to use this one. Yeah, I think I especially did that. Yes, I did. So this this chart right here shows you that green line, the nine period moving average above the 14 period moving average. Uh, this is AOS this is a semiconductor company. But let me go to what we were looking at moments ago, which is the XLK and the XLK. This is the daily chart. Look. The MACD, I love this because I, I've always wanted to continue to use the black background charts because the colors just show up so fantastically. It makes a visual reading just so much easier than a white background chart. Look, the MACD's gone negative. Stochastic is negative on the XLK daily chart. Um, and you've got the nine period moving average uh, still way above the 14. It's holding beautifully since it broke above back in uh, the 18th, around about the 18th of October. I'll be back in a moment. Basil Chapman, Tiger Ginger. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Let me try to go back if I'm even even able to do that on the different uh, uh, during the break. I'm always really busy during the break. A lot of questions come in. I just feel them right away. Uh, this is for the people in the den and the, uh, the Tiger YouTube. So let me go backwards here. So GT is pulling back. This is Goodyear Tire pulling back quite sharply. It's just taking out the left side low. We're going to see whether or not at uh, 19.47 down a dollar, uh, dollar four. What happens next? Uh, Newmont Mining mentioned earlier on, uh, it's just gone, flipped uh, to, well, the day's young, but the daily has just flipped, if it stays this way, to a, to a sell, uh, and it is down $1.39 at 54.78. Uh, but it basically, it's just in the rectangle formation, nothing to see here, just going sideways, hasn't broken down, hasn't broken up. Uh, what we, what we're looking at, oh, Fang, uh, Fang, which is, here we go, Fang, which is a, a diamond uh, back energy pulling back, also flipped to an S right there. It had a, a wedge formation. It's at the bottom of the wedge formation. The MACD is weak. The stochastic is very weak. On balance volume is weak. And it just turned pink. You see there, the uh, um, this is the nine period under the 14 period moving average. Look at, uh, what was the question here? Uh, uh, where was it? Where was it? Oh, an ARKK, which is... Um, Kathy Woods uh, fund. Look at this. It's about to test the left side low yet again. It is down a dollar fifty-two at ninety-one point fifty. It made a high just recently with a Doji candle high. I believe that was peak A, B, C, D, E, F. I think it was peak F right there. The Doji candle high, and that was at hundred and twenty-seven, yeah, hundred twenty-five eighty-six. And yet it is trading at ninety. Uh, this is this is not good. So she's had recommendations, and um, basically what happens is uh, we had a stock yesterday that I recommended because it hit the 200 period moving average. Um, I liked I liked the fact that it was there. I liked the fact that it was a stock that um, I've looked at for ages. Had the patience to wait and wait and wait. It was down sharply, um, and we got in uh, okay. I, I said, let's just take a, a starter position, but even that gets smitten too. And we had two positions, and it, it we got in, and then it pulled back. And then I, I, as it was pulling, as we were getting in, 
I suddenly saw that uh, Kathy Woods had, had recommended, she was buying the stock the day before. I thought, oh no, I thought it was just doing a natural test of the 200 period moving average. And I, 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 her history lately, and lately means about the last few to six months, is that when she buys a stock, that day it goes down sharply. The next day it keeps going down, and then it goes down after. Then it tries to rally, and then it goes even lower. I mean, I, at some point, this is going to be a fantastic fund because you're going to get things so cheaply. But that's ARKK, which is the, what is it called again? This is the ARK Innovation ETF. However, uh, I quickly send out a note saying, we want to have a stop on this position and a very tight stop. Um, Talking about a hundred and forty dollar stock, and I said about a three less than a three point uh, stop on that. So um, basically, uh, we, we got taken out, and then it closed at about that price. And I said to myself, "Gee, um, that that's actually quite, quite good action because usually they plummet. It actually went down intraday, down to the hundred and thirty five level, then closed at about one hundred thirty nine, hundred and forty. And then I said, "No, we got stopped out. We, we, we'll wait. Let's wait for the Fed." Because if the Fed says something that the market perceives as business more more business as usual than anything else, then we could start to look at it in a different way. Uh, because if the market starts to rally, then these really beat up Nasdaq type stocks, all the stocks that were in the category of the Nasdaq 100, um, even though they're not be might not be four letter uh, symbols. Um, could have a pretty decent counter trend bounce. Anyway, so we, we're out of that. And I, I don't know what it's doing right now, but uh, all I can say is that, uh, let's see. Um, in fact, it's down, it's down, it's down, like I thought it would be. So we're, we're, we're out of that. But in the meantime, back at the ranch, I'm not going to praise myself for anything other than the fact that our, our portfolio, uh, right as we're speaking, has quite a few stocks up. Some of them are up a dollar or more. Some of them are up quite nicely. But mostly, I'm watching this. We've raised some cash. We're ready for anything. I want to show you something here that's that's not so good. Is the XLF? The X. Where did I type that? Wrong place. Uh, XLF right now. XLF is trading. Um, look, it's holding okay, but it's not really going anywhere fast, which is okay. But this is the financials, and the financials technically, because the TLT, I'm, not, I'm loving this back, black background, because look how nicely you can now clearly, look at this, if I draw a pattern on this, look how I can just, I don't want to draw too much because I'm using this for a specific purpose. Look, there's your cup formation, you went all the way up. And now it's kind of making a handle, not my favorite pattern, but it's holding. So this is the TLT, and the TLT trading uh, down 11 cents at 150.59 is going to tell us after 3 o'clock today, is the TLT spiraling into the 152.80 to 153s, saying yields are coming down, they're not going up, or is the TLT going to drop? Below 148, it's 150 right now, 58. Does it drop a point and a half, two points, saying, uh oh, yields are going quite a bit higher. Regardless of what the Fed says, yields are by themselves going to the upside. That's going to be the big thing. So we, we've raised cash. I'm, I'm kind of upset still. I will be upset forever because we timed the SMH short just to the day perfectly, but I decided not to use the SMHs, the semiconductor vector ETF. Because some people have said they have real trouble getting the short. They can't get the stocks to short it. Uh, that is a problem. So I've used, I had no choice but to use the three times uh, short SOXL, sorry, SOX, SOXS. Um, and, and that, we, uh, the 343 low was there, but we, we, we've been short a, a couple of times. We're now down just a little bit because I'm, I have very tight stops. But in a way, I'm saying, gosh, you know, it's a, such a difficult instrument to play three times. Um, if we had just stuck with the one to one short, the actual stock on the very day that we got in, would have got in, I could have still been holding that and said, OK, you show me where you're going. So far, you're looking at NVIDIA and all these key uh, semiconductors pulling back quite sharply from the recent highs 346 and uh, 47 was the high in nvidia it traded down yesterday to the 270s now it's at 
87.03, up 374. So what I'm saying is this is a, a an extremely mixed market. Within the same sector, you can have some stocks doing fantastically and something like advanced micro devices, which have led the way up to 164.46 all-time high. Yesterday touches 130, today it's at 138. It's up 2.42. Is it trying to find some kind of strength? And if you look at the IAA, which we are still long from the 20, uh, I'm sorry, from the 45 area, way back in um, uh, March the 24th of last year, not this year, last year, uh, we've taken lots of little bit, tiny little bits off. We wanted to keep a core position. It dropped from 116 high, all time high, on the 2nd of November to 106. That's 10 points, about 9%. And then it popped up to the 112 level down to 107 and now it's at 108 17. so this is right on the cusp in the weekly chart of taking out to the downside key support this is the ice is broken dealer etf i'll be back are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Uh, yes, yeah, so, uh, Berkshire Hathaway, a question about that. Berkshire Hathaway up 24 cents at 295.27 at an all time high. I looked at this the other day. I thought, you know, at 288, I think. 288 I said yeah this could go this could retest the high but then the pattern that's been just we've seen it so many times is a rectangle form formation the longer a narrow rectangle formation can continue the greater the strength of that inside uh, action in other words 
the 28486 magnet is so powerful in this pattern. We saw this in the IWM where it broke to a leg D and then went right back inside towards the lower end of the range, which is exactly what we're seeing. I'm trying to think what else it was that we were looking at. Oh, my goodness. Anyway, so Berkshire Hathaway um, is looking to me like it's going to do the same thing. It's going to rally a little bit. It's gone to an all-time high above this. It could go maybe just a tad higher week. Weekly is in leg D. Daddy, I've got this a B. So it could it could have a, a choppy couple of days, a whole, a whole, go into early next week before it makes some kind of a top. And then I think it comes back into the range, Berkshire Hathaway. But this is, you see, this is what I think that the Fed has to look at. Berkshire Hathaway is the U.S. economy. It is in everything. Insurance, it doesn't matter. Banking, it's in everything. And here it is at an all-time high. And remember, what I love about uh, Buffett is that um, he, this is, what he's doing here is he is not just buying the stocks. There are there are companies that he has, so he buys into the company. That's that's there's a big difference, and therefore this is saying to me that the economy at this point is actually doing really well. If you look at Sintas, which is the overalls, um, almost at an all time high uh, yesterday by a fraction. What was today? Wednesday, Monday, all time high. Today, uh, then next day, just a fractionally lower um, high, and today it's at 452. This is telling us that the economy actually is doing darn well. So under every other condition, I see no reason why over the period of year really, um not months, but over the last two, three years, I've been saying if the economy is good, you should naturally, the natural consequence is that people want to loan money to expand businesses or do whatever it is. Therefore, the cost of money goes higher. Just there's nothing confusing about it. That's the way it should be. This whole thing of uh, interest rates going lower and lower and lower is just it. This it's just weird, right? It's to do with the competition around the world uh, to give out money. Now, to, I shouldn't say give out money. That, there's a different connotation there. Is to um, is to have their rates low. The competition for the remember I, I mentioned it five years ago, six years ago. I'm, in fact, my expression since 19, since the Japanese top back in 1990, I've been talking about the Japanization of American yields. I say we're going to get the same thing as Japan. We'll go to zero percent. Well. That's the competition there. So the natural consequence should be that the Fed says, hey, doesn't even have to say anything. They just say uh, uh, raising a quarter point here, a quarter point there. But that's the, this is a different world we're in right now. Therefore, what I'm looking at here is that the TLT, I'll make it as simple as possible. If the TLT starts to rally into the 154s, this is the bonds, the Lehman 20 year Treasury bond fund. If it goes into the 154 or higher, it means rates are coming down. If it starts to plunge under the uh, 200 period moving average of 147.40, that means yields are going higher. Just keep it as simple as that. I don't know what the reasoning is, but those are the things I'm looking at, number one. Number two is when you're looking at um, Home Depot, normally under these conditions, Home Depot, which made an all-time high of 420.61 peak F about a week and a half ago, it's pulled back a little bit. It's up today, but it's pulled back just a little bit to the 403 area. Well, um, all I can say is that this, together with the HGX, which is the Philadelphia Housing Index, made an all-time high peak uh, just a few, uh, three days ago at a 530.42, was it? For 41, 530.41, and it's pulling back. No, sorry, I shouldn't say an all time high. The all time high was back in May, May, the week of the 14th, at 538.36. Um, so, uh, th this is saying that people are buying houses, and in usual recessions, it's the exact opposite. People are not buying houses, and you see rates going up for other reasons. So all I'm saying is, think of this. The Fed, the 6.8 reading in inflation is way more than they were anticipating. They're going to have to talk about it. They're going to have to say, we're going to do something. We know they're going to have to do something about it. 
uh, higher rates at this particular point shouldn't really be a problem, but it is it is a problem for some of the tech stocks because they're loaning. It, it used to be also for the um, biotech stocks because they do so much loaning. Well, you've seen the biotechs, 177.57, August all-time high. Uh, now it's down to 145. It's not a big deal, but it is pulling back. So I think we're looking at a market that says wh how the Fed speaks this afternoon and what the reaction is in the market. It might be just momentary, but I suspect that you can make it as simple as this, that if there is a close, if we saw it at 3 o'clock, really seeing the market tank, um, we, we can see that going on for, for a couple of days until it settles down. But if, in fact, the market rallies and then rallies again tomorrow, it's saying, hey, things are not as bad. Look at the IYT. This is the, um, the iShares Dow Jones Transportation Average Index Fund trading underneath the falling axe and the arch formation resistance level. But the all-time high of 287 back in May of this year Big deal. We're at 263, 20 points, not even 10% lower. And that includes jets, which is the U.S. airline. This is the airlines, global airline ETF. Uh, sorry, U.S. It's called U.S. Global Jets ETF. Um, look at this, making the dreaded H pattern here. Does it at 19.56. And that means the CSXs of the world, that's the uh, rails, Almost all-time highs at 36.30 uh, with an all-time high of 37.50, was it? I can't remember. I looked at it the other day. 37.35, uh, a point off that high. So this is the and, – and trucking, I think Y is trucking, Allegheny Coy, isn't that trucking? Um, just pulling back, it's, it's kind of in the middle of the range. So you've got the rails doing fantastically. You've got the trucking kind of in the middle. They're also having a labor problem. And then you've got jets, the, the airline index. So I'm saying this: this market is a mixed market. But in this context, you've got to be looking at you've got to be looking at the, the engine, the new engine of the economy, which is the semiconductors. And I think that's telling you that it's just a minor pullback from the 318 high to the 299 level we're at. If the semiconductors start to tank in the next week, you're looking at 283. Uh, 16 points, no, no, yeah, 16 points below this where we are now. That says, watch out, that's going to be a lot more serious. If it holds steady, holds the 288s and then rallies up again, and but it doesn't make it too high, but it goes sideways, that would be a good sign. So I'm trying to outlay for you why you've got to be very stock specific at this particular point. Because look at this, Pfizer, all-time high as we speak to right now at 57.32, up $1.77. Does it care about the Fed? Not yet. I'll be back in a moment, but... Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. All right, we're back, and we're looking at the uh, little E-mini here. This is the S&P E-mini. Let's see, going to D E N F. Yeah, so let's make it as simple as possible. This is so fascinating. Uh, on Fed days, what happens so often, not every time, but so often, is that whatever the market does intra-morning, going into the Fed speak at 2 o'clock, uh, two o'clock that is uh, Eastern time. So often you'll see the, the the market either pull back sharply, but as it gets closer and closer to the Fed um, minutes uh, when they announce it, when they have the conference, if they do at 2.30, you'll see it narrowing until sometimes it could be almost unchanged just a little bit before and then it explodes one way or the other or it's higher and then it comes back down and down. It's one of the one of the uh, ways you can play uh, maybe options or something on Fed Day because you can just you can play the extrapolate from that information that any expansion either up or down is going to narrow considerably as it gets closer to Fed speak moment. Okay, Car Gurus Inc. Uh, online. The reason why I got to the Car Gurus is that I was saying, um, the, I mentioned that Dan uh, G7 said, Wolf is now Cree. Cree is, I used to follow Cree for forever, uh, just as something to follow. I didn't I hardly ever put on trades on Cree, but it came together with click and clack. Uh, you remember clack is these also in the in the, I think in the semi semiconductor area. So uh, Cree was taken over by Wolf, uh, W O L F. Uh, so I didn't know that, and I've been I've been following Wolf, but I haven't I, I didn't realize that. It was once Cree. And then that took me to, um, I don't know how I moved along. That's the way my mind works. So I said, no, not the former car gurus. Oh, click and clack. clack. You remember here in the Boston area, uh, WGBH, oh, I could, going back to the 1970s, was it? Um, they used to have this program with click. They called themselves click and clack. Or the Maraza brothers, um, they had a, a garage uh, car. They did car talk. Um, they, they, were, they were great because although occasionally they really hit on something important in the car <laughs> to do with cars, mostly it was fantastic when they talked about the, the romances and all sorts of things and how people could meet other people. Uh, they, they, they were really, I mean, funny, funny, funny. I, whenever we went to New York, uh, even on the replays, uh, as we got into the border, uh, Connecticut on 84, just that's when it came on in that particular uh, channel, and we would listen. And I, it made that hour go so quickly um, because it, they were just so funny. Um, well, not enough of that. So it got it took me to car gurus. I said car gurus, and then I thought, ah, C A R G. I'm a, I got a neighbor who I, I think works for car gurus. Uh, anyway, car gurus is down 99 cents at 32.33. It ran up in this environment. It's very interesting that in this environment where 
uh, fewer and fewer cars are available, but the, they are selling cars for way more than before. So they, the car companies are actually making money. This hit a high, not an all-time high. The all-time high was 57.25 in September of 2018, a few months after it became public. And then it had a little bit of a plunge down to the 14 area. And then it ran up to the most recent high of uh, 39.76. Remember how many times am I talking about? And that's what I said. We're looking at many charts going from one level, and then in weeks they come down and they go right back to the same level. So 39.76 on the 11th of November, and the high on the 7th of December was 30, 39.77. One penny higher, and now it's trading at 32.29, down sharply. So this is, these are the things I like to look for, because this is saying to me that there's a double top in place in the daily and the weekly chart. Both of them are now, as we're speaking, gone from a sell signal to a sell mode. Well, it's not Friday. I can't talk about that. It looks like the weekly will go into a sell mode, but it isn't yet. And there's a leg D in the in the monthly chart. The last peak D was in September of 2018. Oh, that, oh uh, yeah, so there was ABC. Right, goes all the way to a perfect peak D in the Chapman wave, 57.25, and then it comes down, makes a one-to-one -to, -one to the downside, goes to 14.80, what was that? 14.25. Uh, in March of 2020, and it rallies all the way up to this double top of in the 3970s, and it's now down to 3228. And this is what I keep my eye on, and this is saying to me, aha, maybe what we're looking at is, yeah, the semiconductor index together with the automobiles, this is what Ford is doing. Ford has made that peak D in the rectangle formation, it popped out of it, now it's back in the re this pattern, remember, memorize this pattern. A long, narrow rectangle formation at highs says if you break to the upside, be careful because the magnet of the middle of the rectangle is so powerful, most of the time the price is going to come back in. And this is exactly what Ford has done. It's still acting fantastically. But give me a break. Are you telling me that Ford is saying that they're going to make so many electric vehicles that they're going to go to in this particular phase now, or is it going to take time? It's going to take time. Not only that, there are more and more reports of people not being that happy with the electric vehicles because of the plug-in. It's actually a damn nuisance if you've got to do it every single night. Um, the people who love the Teslas, they'll do anything, so you can't really ask them. But ask anyone else who has an electric vehicle, not the hybrid, but the electric, especially in New York. Who was the guy the other day I heard on... on, on um, on uh, the CNBC show at five o'clock. He was saying he had bought the Mustang E, a fantastic, fantastic uh, 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 car. He was he put his name on the list and he paid, must have paid top dollar for it. And he's in Manhattan and he can't find, it's not a Tesla. You, you haven't got enough stations to charge the darn thing. So it's just, he's getting rid of it. And he had his name down for the, the, the Lucid, was it the Lucid or the Rivian or whatever, uh, um, truck. Name's off the list. And, I, you know, there's a practical side to this. So all I'm saying is that we're going to be watching this closely. The, the selectivity of this market right now says if you are in certain stocks that have held well to date, if they can survive the next two, three days going into Monday of the next week, you're in an area that says, whew, you're okay. But if you're in an area that's been very weak, and no matter what the Fed does today, tomorrow that those stocks are still weak, so just be really careful. And you're looking at stocks that were at record highs or close to yearly highs just days ago, that are actually taking a dive. So that's why I'm saying this is a very select time. Have cash ready. You never know what's going to happen. Question came in. Can I look at Sophie? I don't know how you pronounce that. Sophie Technologies, SOFI, is the symbol down 34 cents at 14.35. This is digital financial service with mobile applications, IPO, uh, back in uh, towards the end of 2020 uh, in, the, in the 10 area, screams to 28. It drops sharply and then rides back up, making lower highs, but big moves and higher lows, making this, uh, well, it's actually changed the pattern a little bit. 
but it is down sharply in the monthly chart. And I'm just saying that, just look at the pattern. It had a fantastic move, and a lot of people looking at it did very well when it ran to peak after the Jack wave at 24.65. Look how quickly it's come down. Uh, it's in a, at, at a, a, a trough deep. I'll be back in a moment. Dow's down 96, SP's down 8. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Target First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, so I, I was asked about uh, um, MA uh, a MasterCard. Uh, that was, uh, I think, Friday, and I actually did it on my sh my overview on Saturday. Then I thought I had already done. I forgot to do it. Now it's Wednesday. But I was going to say you have to hold off on on. Look, Visa made a at uh, um, a, a peak B and it's pulling back. It's underneath the 14 period moving average. They do a little bit different things. MasterCard is a little bit better chart but it's pulling back. And all I'm going to say is I'd like to hold off on MasterCard. I'd like to look at it again tomorrow. I just can't say anything right now because it's just it's, the 200 period moving average is at 350. It's trading at 336, down about four points. I, it's just kind of stuck here. It, I, like, I like it as theoretically I like it with rates as they are especially rates are going up they're going to be able to charge even more let's give it another day so i if you if it's in your portfolio just keep holding it uh, watch the 333 level if it takes that out and says could pull back a little bit more but if you're not and you're looking to get in i have to hold it for a day even if you overpay on the upside okay next thing is apple 
Apple's just digesting big gains, 182.13 three days ago, all-time high. I think it's a little bit overbought. I still suspect that Apple is going to be able to sell a lot more than many other places for the Christmas season. They're going to be one of the beneficiaries. I, I don't know for sure. This is I'm thinking that because they've got so many different products. Uh, the other thing I was asked about, could I look at uh, Facebook? Uh, Facebook is trading. It oh, looks like MasterCard, actually. It's just stuck in this range at 3.27. It needs to get to 3.43. Uh, if it pulls back under 3.22, that's a problem. It's going to come down a little bit more. But it's stuck in a range right now. Uh, the third one was, oh, just could I just quickly do wheat? Yeah, wheat has made a big thing. Look at that sharp feedback in the Jap breakfast project. I spoke about this about three weeks ago. Said, be careful. It could make the dreaded H pattern. That's what it's done. So, so I'm going to hand you over to, uh, uh, we've got Eric Pismento, Pinker Swamp, Steve Rose, Dave White, and Tom O'Brien. Check out the opening call. They use that across the for the Fed. I'll be coming this time at 11 o'clock. 